when a chemical reaction is taking place there are some characteristic changes that can be easily observed for example when we add calcium to water so when a piece of calcium is dropped in water you see bubbles being formed that means a gas is released this gas can be collected in the test tube so a very characteristic change taking place is the formation of bubbles which shows that a gas is released so when calcium reacts with water it forms calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas so this gas that is released is seen through the bubbles being formed so this is a very characteristic change taking place that can be easily observed another characteristic change that can be observed is the changing color for example hydrated copper sulfate is a blue substance if we heat this blue hydrated copper sulfate on heating it changes into white and now if we add some water to this white substance it again changes into blue so over here a chemical reaction is taking place that is we had hydrated copper sulfate which is cuso4.5h2o on heating it loses the water of crystallization so it forms anhydrous copper sulfate which is white in color and water is released similarly if we add water to the white anhydrous copper sulfate we get back the blue hydrated copper sulfate so this is a very characteristic change taking place we can easily observe the changing color another characteristic change taking place during a chemical reaction is the formation of precipitates precipitate is an insoluble solid so for example if we take silver nitrate and we add sodium chloride to it so you observe that a white precipitate is being formed so the formation of precipitates is also a very characteristic change taking place that can be easily observed so these are the changes that can be easily observed by us there are some changes associated with energy when a chemical reaction takes place there are some energy changes taking place as well these energy changes taking place during the chemical reaction is known as chemical energy so the energy that we associate with the chemical reactions is known as chemical energy this chemical energy is the energy associated with the chemical reaction now let's see how is energy associated with a chemical reaction when you exhale you take your hand and you exhale you see some heat is being evolved so in this some heat is released similarly the burning of coal when we burn coal in the presence of oxygen heat is released it forms carbon dioxide and it releases a large amount of heat that is why we use coal as fuels as it releases a large amount of heat so such reactions in which heat is released or heat is given out are known as exothermic reactions exo means out therm means heat so when heat is given out or heat is released such reactions are known as exothermic reactions this reaction we have a black colored substance and we add some glycerin to it so this is a highly exothermic reaction you see that a large amount of heat is released so whenever energy is released or given out such reactions are known as exothermic reactions let's see genie coming out of a bottle
So isn't it interesting? He just saw a genie coming out of the bottle. What is happening here? Is this the same effect that you see on televisions when a genie comes out of the bottle? Well, let's see what is happening here. In this, we had taken a liquid that is hydrogen peroxide. In a small paper, we take manganese dioxide, we make a small pouch and it is attached with a string. Now we release the string in the bottle, making sure that the manganese dioxide does not touch hydrogen peroxide. And this is done by keeping the string in its position by the cap. Now as soon as we release the cap, the manganese dioxide drops in hydrogen peroxide. So as soon as manganese dioxide reacts with hydrogen peroxide, that is a very exothermic reaction. It's a highly exothermic reaction and it appears like a genie coming out of the bottle. So this might be something, some effect that you see on televisions. So in, a, in an exothermic reaction, exo, that is heat is being released. As heat is given out or released, the exothermic reactions are always accompanied by a rise in temperature. Since heat is given out, that means there is a rise in temperature. Now in some reactions, heat is absorbed. So when energy or heat is absorbed for a reaction to take place, such a chemical reaction is known as an endothermic reaction. Endo means in. Therm is energy or heat. So when energy or heat is taken in or absorbed for a chemical reaction to take place, such a reaction is known as an endothermic reaction. For example, calcium carbonate, this gives a decomposition reaction. It forms calcium oxide and carbon dioxide only when it absorbs heat. So for this, we need a high temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius. So when heat is given to calcium carbonate, it absorbs heat and decomposes to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So in this, heat is absorbed. So this is an endothermic reaction. Since in endothermic reactions, heat is absorbed for the reaction to take place. Since they extract heat, so there is a fall in temperature. In exothermic reactions, heat is given out or released. So there is a rise in temperature. In endothermic reaction, the reactants take in heat from the surroundings. So it is accompanied by a fall in temperature. Let's see this happening. We have a thermometer. We have two solutions. If an exothermic reaction takes place, we will see that the temperature rises. If an endothermic reaction takes place, we will see that the temperature drops. So now we mix the two reactants. We see that the temperature increases. That means this was an exothermic reaction. Now we take another reactant. So in this case we take ethanoic acid and some other substance. If in this case we mix the two you see that the temperature drops. So this is an endothermic reaction. The reactions accompanied by an increase in temperature are exothermic reactions and the reactions accompanied by decrease in temperature are endothermic reactions. Now let's try to classify some reactions. In this we have two reactants. We are providing heat and it forms the products. So in this case, heat is given to the reactants. That is, heat is being absorbed. So this is an example of an endothermic reaction. Now, in this case, you observe, when two reactants are mixed, they form the two reactants and heat is released. So we have written heat in the product side. So this is an example of an exothermic reaction. When heat is given out, that is an exothermic reaction. But what is happening in this reaction? We see that we are giving heat to the reactants. 
and heat is also evolved. So is this an exothermic or an endothermic reaction? Well, when we are providing heat to the reactants and at the same time heat is being released, this means that a greater amount of heat is released than the heat provided to the reactants. Only then we get heat on the product side. So this is an exothermic reaction. So based on the net amount of heat taken in and the heat evolved, we get an endothermic or an exothermic reaction. In this case, we see that this reactants A and B, they take in heat for the reaction to take place. But at the same time, we see heat on the product side. That means, number one, we can check if the amount of heat released is more than the heat taken in. This will be an exothermic reaction. And if the heat absorbed is more than the heat released, this will be an endothermic reaction. But, but in most of the cases, when we get heat as the product, that means that the heat being released is much larger as the heat being absorbed. So in this case, it will be an exothermic reaction. So now we have two types of reactions. Exothermic reaction. Exo means out. So when heat is given out, those reactions are exothermic reactions and they are accompanied by a rise in temperature. Similarly, endothermic reactions are those in which heat is absorbed. Since they extract heat, so these reactions are accompanied by a fall in temperature. And these energy changes that are taking place are because of the chemical bonds. The formation and the breaking of bonds is because of which we get the energy changes. So if some chemical bonds are being broken, they need some energy. So energy is absorbed during the breaking of bonds and when some new bonds are being formed, they release energy. So the breaking of bonds absorbs energy, the formation of bonds releases energy. And this is how the chemical bonds, the formation and the breaking of the chemical bonds leads to the energy changes.